Hey, this is Joe with Grow It Building. Today I'm going to tell you all about Obedient Plant. This has got to be one of the coolest looking blooms in all of North America. The tightly arrayed flowers along and around the stalk almost look like something mass produced rather than a naturally occurring flower. This is Obedient Plant. Perhaps the North American answer to foxglove? It is a perennial with a long bloom time that is, is particularly good at producing nectar for bees. This video will be a complete profile on this species, including what it is and why you should grow it, the growing conditions, the physical description, ID, and we'll talk a lot about rhizomes, growing from seed, saving seed, wildlife and garden uses, and then we'll review. So I hope you stick with me as uh, this plant is really beautiful, but you got to strategically use it in the right way, which we'll talk about in detail. So let's have a look. Okay, what is obedient plant? Obedient plant is a showy perennial flower native to Eastern North America that is good at attracting bees. Scientifically, it's known as Physotegia virginiana, I hope I pronounced that right, and it is in the mint family. It blooms tightly packed in arrayed pink tubular flowers for four to six weeks with sporadic blooms as long as eight weeks after initiation. The common name of obedient plant comes from the fact that you can bend one of the blooms to uh, off to the side and it will often stay put where you bent it. Like some other members of the mint family, obedient plant will spread via rhizome roots and it can do this very aggressively in certain conditions, especially when there's not much competition. But the native range of this plant is generally east of the Rocky Mountains with a few exceptions in there. Why you should grow it. Beauty is the first reason to grow this plant. The intricate and ornate flowers are very interesting to look at. They're so tightly arrayed and ordered along the stalk that it almost reminds you of like a Fibonacci sequence or something. They're just really gorgeous. Clay. Obedient plant can thrive in conditions that many other plants cannot. It grows very well in clay and also in moist areas. So if you have these conditions, now you have another species that should do well there. Because not that many plants can. Bees. The main pollinator to the obedient plant that I see is bees, bumblebees and long-tongued bees in particular. And that's probably because of the tubular flowers, but it will also attract butterflies and occasionally hummingbirds. It can help compete with invasive species. Due to how prolific this plant can be, it can help uh, fill in any gaps that you may have in a wild area that will help keep invasive species at bay, such as garlic mustard or other things. Its ability to rapidly colonize and spread and disturb sites combined with its height can really help keep the bad guys at bay or at least reduce them. And we will talk a lot more in depth about obedient plant spreading with rhizomes and strategies how to manage them and so on and so forth. It has a long bloom duration and makes a great cut flower. Obedient plants bloom for about four to six weeks and they're very showy in that time frame. And it makes it one of the longer blooming perennials. This is also a great cut flower and it's great for bouquets and vases if you like to do that. And it has been used as a cut flower around the world actually, so. And if you guys are liking this video, please give me a thumbs up as it really helps my channel out a lot. Thank you. Okay, so we're gonna get into growing conditions. And before I forget, this entire video exists as an article at our website, growupbuilt.com. So if you're looking for a quick reference later, you don't wanna sit through a video, you can bookmark that article, which I'll link to below, and you can just jump there for a quick reference. But in regards to growing conditions, obedient plant is going to grow best in full sun, which is at least six hours per day, but it can tolerate partial shade, which is at least four hours per day. The more sun you get, the taller and showier it will be. For soil, it's going to like loamy soil with organic matter, but it's able to grow and thrive in clay or even rocky conditions. For soil moisture, it does best in moist soil to medium moist soil. It does not like to dry out. My primary patch that I have on the side of my house will get beat down with hot afternoon sun. And it's not uncommon that I will have to provide it with some supplemental water as the leaves may start to droop. For physical description and identification, the overall shape of this plant is gonna be of a single stalk with a medium to dark green stem. It's in the mint family, so the stalk will be square or at least have four sharp angles. There may be some branching near the top where the flowers occur, but that would be about it. And it's gonna get about four feet tall in optimum conditions with full sun. And it'll, I think spread will be about two feet. The leaves are pretty identifiable. They are lance shaped and opposite, meaning there'll be symmetrical pairs along the stalk. Each pair will be rotated 90 degrees from the previous and the edges are serrated. 
An individual leaf is about four to five inches long by one to two inches wide. Individual flowers at the uh, top of the stalk are going to be white, white pink to light purple in color, tubular and about one inch long by half an inch wide or diameter. They're densely arranged in columns and around the stalk in rows. Peak color is about four weeks for bloom duration, but I have noticed individual blooms on my plants going as long as eight weeks later after the onset. The root system is a shallow tap root uh, with fibrous roots and rhizomes. And the rhizomes generally will be shallow um, if there's no barriers in front of them, only two to four inches deep in my experience. All right, so let's talk about rhizomes and propagating from them. So obedient plant is gonna produce rhizome roots like some other members of the mint family, like Monarda didyma and others. And what is a rhizome root? A rhizome root is a horizontal root that travels through the ground and sends up new shoots or new plants along the way. For a good example of a plant that does this that everyone is familiar with, it would be goldenrod. Here's some pictures of rhizome action on goldenrods that I pulled out of a garden bed in all of its prolific glory this past spring. Okay, so back to obedient plant. Obedient plant is going to have rhizome roots and they are gonna spread each year. The amount of spread will be determined by the conditions and what actions you do or do not take to contain it. We inherited a flower bed that was overrun with both obedient plant and red bee balm. These two species had spread pretty much unchecked for years and we allowed it as it makes for prolific blooming for each species and it can look nice. But this is what unchecked spreading looks like as 80% of these small plants you see here are either obedient plant or red bee balm. Now, we did redo this bed this year, and I'll show you how we're going to contain it in a minute, but to see an, another example of the spread, what I'm going to show you now is our backyard micro prairie. I planted two plants back here, and this is year three. This is the first plant. It's now producing about 10 shoots, and um, the other one is doing about the same, which we'll see in just a second here, but this soil is uh, compacted sandy loam, so that's the kind of spread you can expect in three years uh, for an example. Now, there's a few ways to contain it. The first one is to let it go wild. So put it somewhere where it can go wild. The next way is just pull unwanted shoots each year. You're gonna to have to do this a couple of times, probably two weeks apart. When you see this starting to pop up, this is what the plants look like when they emerge in the spring. You just need to get them out of there in any rhizome root you can find. The third way is to try to contain obedient plant with some kind of a border. What I'm testing this year is lining a large pot with some weed barrier that I've pulled up with the idea that no rhizomes will be able to squeeze through the weed barrier and the uh, pot wall. I can't show you any results from this right now as we're just testing it, but I'm pretty confident that it'll work. Hopefully we get enough moisture to transfer through the weed barrier, but time will tell. So one thing about all these rhizomes, it makes it incredibly easy to propagate this plant. To propagate it from rhizome cuttings, it's really easy. In early spring, when you see the plants uh, sprouting up, just loosen the uh, soil and expose the roots. Cut on each side of the plant about one inch of the rhizome root, at, at least one inch. That's what I normally shoot for. And then just plant it in some moist potting soil in a container. So pot them up and put them somewhere shady for a week or so. And that'll allow the plant to kind of, its roots to grab onto the potting soil and reestablish itself. Then you can move it somewhere sunny and grow it taller or just go plant it in a new location that you would like to have it. How to grow obedient plant from seed. Growing obedient plant from seed, it's not too hard, but it does take a little bit of pretreatment. The seeds are gonna to need to be winter sown or cold stratified in the refrigerator. I have videos on both of these treatment methods and they're not hard to do. I'll put cards in the top right uh, to the videos and links below to articles which are step-by-step -step guides that I wrote. But for planting and all that, you just fill a container with moist potting soil, leaving about a half inch gap to the top. Place a few seeds in the soil, press them in, and lightly cover them with about a sixteenth of an inch of potting soil, which is around one and a half millimeters. Regardless of whether you winter sowed or pre-stratified the seeds in the fridge, once it's time to uh, try to get them to germinate, put the container in a location that will receive morning sun and afternoon shade. Once temperatures warm up, germination should occur within a couple of weeks and make sure you keep the potting soil moist. To save seed from obedient plant, it's pretty easy to do. About a month or two after the flowers have faded, you're gonna have brown capsules form where the flowers were. So at least a month or two. But you cut the stalk off below where the flowers are and just put them into like a brown paper bag and let that dry out for another week or two in a cool dry place, just so you know it's all dry. 
Then I just dump the contents onto a paper plate, pop any capsules that haven't opened up on their own within the bag, and then I strain the mixture a little bit to try to separate some of the chaff, and that's it, you're done. You can store the seed in a completely dry place in a Ziploc bag uh, for about a, a year or two. You could also use an envelope too if you wanted. So as far as how fast it is to establish, in my experience, if you grew it from seed, it will bloom its second year. And by year three, it will be putting out a decent number of runners or rhizomes. If you started it from rhizome propagation, it should bloom the first year and begin sending out runners the second year. For wildlife, bumblebees are the main pollinators of obedient plant. You're going to see other bees that are long tongue, but uh, the tubular flowers make it so that you have to have a long tongue bee. Also, butterflies will visit. I've seen everything from small skippers to large swallowtails. And hummingbirds also visit the plant, but not very reliably in my experience. Deer and rabbits, like other members of the mint family, obedient plant is pretty darn resistant to deer and rabbits in my experience. I've never really noticed any damage to them, so that's a definite plus. For garden uses, you can use this plant in almost any setting, but it's going to take some management in a formal flower bed. In a well manicured flower bed with the right conditions, you should employ one of the containment strategies I described. And I'll tell you my results next year for the pot lined with weed barrier, but until then, try one of the other methods. But if you do have a wild area or a border or a prairie or some kind, then that would just be the best place for it. A border of a pond or a creek would be an excellent space if there's enough light. So these are the ones I planted here in my backyard to help fight off cut plant seedlings, of which I need to pull many each spring. But, you know, this is year three, and this is how many stalks I have. And all of these will bloom. They'll look nice in their little area here, make its own colony. And there's lots of competition back here, though. Some companion plants for obedient plants that would bloom concurrently would be Joe Pie weed, swamp milkweed, ironweed, white turtle head, and then some flowers that would grow in similar conditions but bloom before or after would be like Golden Alexander, um, flocks, jewel weeds, and varieties. I do need to talk about uh, different varieties of this plant. There's a lot of them available. A lot of them are hybrids or strange colors, but uh, I want to highlight one in particular. It's called Miss Manners. It's a naturally occurring genetic mutation, uh, so a cultivar, and it's white in color and it doesn't really spread. It stays in a clump and it's probably best suited for the formal flower bed if you don't mind the white color. So if spreading is an absolute top concern, that's probably your best choice. But all right, let's review on this one. Obedient plant will grow four feet tall in full sun and moist to medium soil. It can be aggressive and will send out rhizomes. It's great for attracting bees, absolutely beautiful. And it takes a little management to grow this one, but I really like it. I think it's one of the coolest looking flowers I've ever seen in my life, actually. So that's pretty much all I have for this flower. Again, please give me a thumbs up. It does help my channel out quite a bit. I really do appreciate it. And if you guys are looking for another flower to grow in the same area as this one that will bloom before it for a long time, it would be Red Bee Balm, which I have a video on that. I'll put a card up in the right or at the end screen, and I would highly encourage you to check that one out. But uh, if you guys have any questions, please ask them in the comments. I like trying to answer them. And remember the article describing this plant is down below if you need a quick reference later. And you guys all have a good one. Thank you.